are people shying away from dealer lots? Well, no, thus far, um, there hasn't really been much noticeable in our dealerships in either the U.S. Uh, or the U.K., though clearly consumer confidence is going to get hit by this investment market turmoil. What do you do for your employees and, and to address business interruption risk? Because as you've probably noticed, even here on CNBC, we've got plans in place for different people to be in different locations just in case anyone gets shut down. Uh, what about Group 1? Well, we've been several weeks into this, and we had a three-week jump in the U.K. because they're a bit uh, ahead of us. So we're focused on our employees and our customers, and thus far there's been no significant disruption. But we're following all of the direction from the health authorities. Do you have plans for that? I mean, I imagine someone could show up to work tomorrow. Like, all of us have to keep this in mind. When that employee, if we find out that person in, in that office tests positive, what do you do? What's the backup plan? Oh, yeah, we, we have a, a, quite a few contingency uh, plans in place. And we, we had an associate come down with the virus in the U.K., but they had just returned from Italy, were diagnosed, and they never came in the dealership. So we're monitoring every dealership, every employee, every day. All right, Glenn, uh, really important question for the housing market, because when yields first started plunging, this looked like it could be a net positive. Now you've got some talk of open houses uh, being canceled or people not showing up, having to do them virtually, that kind of thing. What's the real estate impact so far? Well, in a place like Seattle, the real estate impact has been significant. We were having a banner year, and that is going to be a real issue for every community. I would just tell anyone in the country, if you have an office where a large number of people are congregating, you should not wait for a coronavirus outbreak. You should close the office and have people work from home. By the time there's an outbreak, it will be too late. Earl, let, let me turn that's back to you. It's just a really basic thing. Go, yeah, I, I think that's good advice, and I want to get, Earl, your reaction to that. You say you're not seeing uh, a fall off in foot traffic. Uh, I assume you have plans throughout your system in case you do get unlucky and, and have a, a coronavirus affect one of your associates. Tell us how much of your time is spent these days uh, on this topic. <laughs> Most of it. Most of it. And, but we serve customers, so we need to be out in the service departments and in the dealerships. But obviously everyone is, is very, very aware now of the good practices and, you know, staying away from each other, washing hands. We, we disinfect uh, the customer areas every day and so forth. But, um, but yeah, our, our job is to service customers, and, and that's what you know, we'll continue to do our best to do. Glenn, I want to talk for a moment about what you just said in terms of all large offices should basically send their workers home. You know, not all offices can. Um, car dealerships might be a good example. TV networks might also be a good example. I mean, there's, there's uh, to some extent, everyone who, who can do that will. I mean, I was at the pediatrician's office this morning. They can't exactly work from home, and they also have to be concerned about their exposure here. So is there a larger response that you think would help everybody better keep this from spreading further? I mean, you know, again, I bring up the Italy analogy. They've shut down everything but grocery stores and pharmacies. I'm not saying I want to go that route, but is a larger response warranted than what is falling on individual business leaders to try to figure out to do? Well, I'm not a public health official, but we have gone through this before other cities have. And at some point, if you're running a large office where people can work from home, you just calculate, I'm either going to do it today or I'm going to do it a week later. And the difference in those five or seven days is that fewer people will infect each other. And so I think it's a matter of time before people who have the option to work at home are told to work at home. There are still a few people in the Redfin office, but not having 500 people in that office really makes a difference. And I think the employees appreciate this emphasis on public health, because we're going to find a way to keep selling houses, to keep selling cars, to keep doing our thing. But if we can take action to help the folks who are working in offices stay safe, that helps maintain continuity of operations. That's good employee relations. It's good for business. How long do you think this is going to last, Glenn? What are you readying for? I don't know. I don't know. It's going to last a long time.